Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, November the 17th, 2020. It is currently 1024 a.m. Central Time. I'm coming to you live from Victory Baptist Church located here in Ovalo, Texas. And I started the program this way for a very specific reason. Those were war, those were air raid sirens that were aired and, and broadcasted during World War II. The reason those sirens were, were sounded off, the reason they set off those sirens was to warn everyone that an air raid was incoming and they, they needed to be aware of the danger. They needed to take you know precautions. They needed to take cover because an air raid was imminent. They were in immediate danger. There was a threat coming. Those are the air raid sirens of World War II. I'm using those sirens today to warn you that you are in danger. We are in the middle of a war and a threat is present. A threat is imminent and you're already being impacted by it, whether you know it or even understand it. Now, you may think that that's all hyperbole. You may think that that's overblown. Now, I'm exaggerating the situation. But I am warning you, I am telling you that we are in danger and we need to wake up. There is a situation that is underway. There is a situation that is developing. Forget that the the air raid is a, that is coming. The air raid is already underway. The bombs are already dropping. The casualties are already falling. And a lot of you are just sitting there not paying any attention. And you're, in a sense, you know, you're sitting there, you know, I don't know what you're doing. You're distracted. And you don't realize that some very important things, some very dangerous things are happening. And I'm going to try to use this episode to wake you up. I'm going to try to use this episode to explain how we got here, where we are, and how we need to start thinking about moving forward. And I hope that this proves to be very, very, very beneficial and helpful. And I hope that you will share this with people you know, because I I, I mean... We need a wake-up call, and I'm going to try to use this episode to wake everyone up. And I want to begin by laying a scriptural foundation, all right? So if you can, if you can, stop what you're doing and open a Bible and turn to the book of Psalms, all right? If you can, if you can't, just listen to me carefully. I know people listen in all kinds of different ways at different times. Just listen to me carefully. You, you, there's a very good chance you already know this scripture, but I would like for you to see it with your own eyes today, all right? The book of Psalms, right? The book of Psalms, and we're going to go to Psalm chapter 2. The book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 2. And I know, you, again, you may be thinking all hyperbole that, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you not to think that way. I'm not, I did not use those sirens just to, for, for, you know, to try to be sensational. I use those sirens because I think they serve as a wonderful illustration. In World War II, if you're living in a, in a city in certain parts of the world and you heard those sirens, you knew that danger was imminent. You knew danger was coming, that an air raid was, was fast approaching and you needed to take cover. I want you to hear those sirens that it's warning you that there's danger today. The book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 2, start in verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? So it's first they start with a question, why do the heathen, why are the heathen so upset? Why, why are they raging and why are they imagining a vain thing? Why are they imagining something that's vain, that's meaningless, that's useless? Why are they imagining this? Well, what, what, what's exactly going on here, right? In fact, you can almost start that, that first question kind of begins to sound the alarm, begins to sound the sirens because something is going on. Look at verse 2, Psalm, the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 2, verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. So you have the kings of the earth, the rulers take counsel. You have the, in a sense, the people of the earth taking counsel and they're rising up. They're they're declaring war. And who are they fighting against? They're fighting against the Lord and against his anointed. And what are they saying? Look, look at verse three. This is a call for everyone. Let us, let all of us, this is what the heathen want. This is what the the kings and the rulers of the earth, this is what they want. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Whose bands and whose cords are they trying to throw off? 
They're trying to throw off, listen, the restraints of God. They're trying to throw off God. This is them declaring a war on God. We don't want God's chains. We don't want God's restraints. We don't want God, the restrictions that come from God. We're going to throw them off. We're, we are rising up and declaring a war on God. Look at, uh, I'll read it from a different translation. Psalm chapter 2, again, the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 2, verse 1. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. This describes the war against God. Now, I want to make this very clear. The war against God didn't start with the Democratic Party. It didn't start in 1990, didn't start in 2000, didn't start in 2020. The war on God, if you really think about it, started with Adam and Eve. God gave them very specific instructions. They decided to throw off God's restraint, throw off his chains. We're going to do what we want to do. And that obviously brought sin into the world. And once sin came into the world, the, the creation, human beings have been at war with the creator. And it has continued and it has continued and it has continued. So this is nothing new, but I want you to see, because in a war, you can have a war and then you can have individual battles, right? I want you to see how this war has process, has progressed. I want you to see how this war um, has progressed over time and where we are right now. Because we not only we this war is ongoing, we're in the middle of a battle right now and we need those sirens. We need those sirens to be issued. We need those. Because where we are right now in that war, where we are right now in that war, it is critical. And and the battle that's raging around us right now is is so crazy that you may not even actually understand what is going on. So again, heed the sirens. Listen to the warnings. Heed the words of Psalm chapter 2 that we live in a world that they're like, we're throwing off God. So this is how it's progressed. Listen carefully. First, You start with a rejection of God so that the world, so that the society that you live enters into a post-Christian era. Now, I want you to understand, throwing off God does not mean that everyone becomes an atheist or an agnostic. Throwing off God means that you throw off God and God no longer becomes the dominant source for your thinking and for your worldview. In other words, you do not submit to God So you are arranging everything under his power and his control. No, you are throwing off that restraint. So even though you may say, we still believe in God, even though, I mean, you see this in the Old Testament over and over and over, Israel would have told you they believed in God, but they were basically doing what they wanted. In fact, in many cases, they they said they believed in God, but they were recreating God in their own image. They, They basically, they threw off the true God, recreated a version of God that they wanted, and then they begin to do what they wanted. They begin to rebel. They turn to idolatry, and they would not listen and heed God's laws, his commandments, his warnings. They would not listen. So I want to make sure we understand throwing off God doesn't mean everyone's an atheist or agnostic. In fact, they, you stay, they still want to be attending church. But guess what has happened? God is not the dominant force in determining how they think and how they see the world. They're not seeing things from the perspective of God. In other words, it's not biblical wisdom. They're not thinking spiritually. they've, They've thrown off biblical wisdom for an earthly, fleshly, sensual, devilish wisdom. God is not the dominant force. So you end in you end up in a post Christian era. And again, there may be a church on every corner. But God is not the dominant thing influencing the way those people think. They may go to church. They may tell you they believe in Jesus. They may even quote scripture, but without even knowing it, they've either A, recreated God in their own image, or God is not really the dominant factor in how they think. And you see this in 2020. Listen to Christians talk and you're like, that's not 
that's not really Bible. That's not really Christian. Where did you get your thinking? Their thinking is being influenced by so many other factors and forces. So we've entered into a post-Christian era. So I want to make sure you understand this. First, you reject God. You enter into a post-Christian era. Now, once you've done that, in a sense, you've cast off the restraints. You've thrown off the chains. And once that happens, once you enter into a post-Christian era, the next two things that will fall. Once, listen, these are the immediate consequences of a post-Christian era. Are you ready? The first major consequence will be an absolute rejection of the very concept of absolute truth. Truth will now become whatever you want it to be. Why? Because once, listen, this is very important. Once you throw off God and you enter into a post-Christian era, you don't stop having gods. You just now have more gods because you've thrown off the true God. And guess what always replaces, we always replace the true God with? We replace the true God with ourselves. We become God. And so guess what? Once you throw off God and you enter into a post-Christian era, you become the God and you now determine what truth is. You now determine what truth is. You now determine what right and wrong is. It's a war. The battle turns, we move away from God and the battle turns to the very concept of truth and we begin to define what it is. Let's, Let's listen to, let's not listen to, well, you can listen to, let me read for you a definition of truth. This is very important, right? Listen to the definition of truth. Here we go. Truth, according to the dictionary, the quality or state of being true. All right? Not super helpful, but listen. The quality or state of being true. Next. That which is true or in accordance with fact or reality. Do not forget this definition. Truth is that which is true or in accordance with fact or reality. All right? So there was a time that, you know, we, 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 we uh, in this country, that I think people believe oh, there are some things are true and there are some things are false. And that which is true is because it's in accordance with fact and reality. But, oh, Once we moved into a post-Christian era, truth became whatever you wanted it to be. Truth, it didn't matter. In fact, people would say things like, there is no absolute truth. And and what happened is the Christian church, I think we we made a strategic error here. We thought we could fight this post-Christian era and this attack on truth by trying to use reason, logic, critical thinking skills. Now, I'm still for teaching people logic and critical thinking skills. Every teacher needs to teach every student these skills. But let me let me make it very clear. Once you enter into a post-Christian era, logic and critical thinking skills, really, they become almost useless. And here's the reason why. Because your your logic and critical thinking skills starts with the presumption that there is facts and there is a reality. But once you throw out God and you become basically your own God, well, you determine facts and reality. So this is what happened. We try to argue with people and we would use little clever techniques like this. You say there's no absolute truth. They would say yes. And then we would say, is that absolutely true? And they would say yes. And we'd be like, gotcha. But it didn't work. Because once you become God, you can bring all the facts, all of the little clever philosophical arguments, and people don't get it. They would just look at you like, I don't care. I don't care. Got me, whatever. I don't, I still believe there is no absolute truth. And I didn't care if that made sense. Because they became God. And once the person becomes God, they determine what truth is. So we, we, we entered into a, we threw, we threw off God, a post-Christian world, where ultimately you replace yourself as God. And then we declared a war on truth. What is truth? Truth is whatever you want it to be. And and Christians fell for this. Christians did not listen. Christians did not listen to this. They didn't, they did not listen to the sirens and, and the, the, the planes were over dropping the bombs and attacking truth and Christians, listen, the next thing you know, Christians started falling for it, right? Next thing, Christians are believing half truths, misinformation. They're spreading their misinformation. They're buying into it. And when you confront them going, you know, that's not true. They get mad at you. 
And you're like, that's just not true. And Christians are the ones who are supposed to be putting away lying and speaking the truth. We should have been like, no, no, no. But listen, you can't fix the problem of, of the war on truth unless you get people back to the true God. Why? Because God is the ultimate source of truth. God is the ultimate source of reality. God is that transcendent source of truth. He is true, and he declares what is false and lies. Once you throw out God, then guess who becomes the, 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 the ultimate determinant of what's true? You do. So then everyone starts doing what is right in their own eyes. And then we're like, the world is falling apart because we left God, All right? So we throw off God, then we begin to throw off truth. Now, this is the stage we've entered into in 2020. All right, the, I want you to listen again. All right, I'm going to play this again. You think it's hyperbole, but th- you need to hear this because the air raid is underway. Take cover, all right? Take cover. I can let that continue to play. Take cover, take cover. Because we, there is a bizarre thing that's happening right now and you have to understand it. So let's go through this again. Throw off God, boom, all right? Then you basically become God. Then you begin to just define truth, whatever you want it to be. Truth just gets thrown to the wayside. Nobody knows what truth is. Nobody cares about anything corresponding to fact or reality. It all just begins to fall apart. And then you enter into the third stage, right? So throw off God and there's two immediate consequences, a war on truth. And then listen, this is where we are. You ready? A war on reality. Now, that, that, that makes sense, right? Because truth is that which conforms to fact and reality. Well, if you, if you be- begin to throw off truth, well, then guess what? You ultimately are attacking the very idea of reality. Now, let's listen. Let me read for you. Let me read for you the definition of reality. This is very important. The definition of reality is this, reality. The world or the state of things as they actually exist as opposed to an idealistic or notional idea of them. Reality is the world or the state of things as they actually exist, as they actually are. Not uh, not your idealistic view, not what you think it is, not your notion of what reality is. No, it doesn't matter. What you what your notion is, what your idealistic view of life is, is irrelevant. Reality is what reality actually is. But guess what's happened? We've thrown off the even reality. Now, this is, this is bizarre what we've done. We've threw out the concept of truth, right? And now we're attacking reality, and this is what happens. Now everyone writes their own reality, and this is bizarre. They write their own reality, and then the reality they write becomes true, not only for them, it's supposed to become true for everyone else. Let me give you a good, let me give you an obvious example. You probably know where I'm going. In 2020, now someone like me who is a man can decide, you know what? I don't identify as a man. Even though my genetic makeup, it would clearly prove that I'm a male. I can say I no longer identify as a male. I now identify as a female. And then guess what? That not only do I now redefine what reality is, even though that goes against my idealistic view, my notion of what reality is, even though, even though reality goes against my idealistic view, my notion, even though reality goes against it, my reality becomes reality. So now I tell everyone, don't refer to me as a he, refer to me as a she, refer to me as female pronouns. I am a female, even though genetically I'm not. Now, here's what happens. Not only do I now write my own reality, here's what now is expected. You now must go along with my reality. So even though we threw, we, we, we ha- entered into a stage of the war where we were fighting against truth, now we're fighting against reality. So a person rewrites reality, and then that reality becomes true not only for them, it becomes true for everyone else. And if you don't go along with it, then you are viewed as being bigoted, prejudiced, hateful. You've committed a hate crime. You, you, know, you, you, you are just insensitive, and you're a horrible human being. You're like, you're a horrible human being because you want to 
maintain some connection to, I don't know, reality as it truly is. Reality is how things truly exist. Not your idealistic view, not your notion of it. That's from the dictionary. That's from the very, that's from a dictionary that talks about it. But that's the world in which we live. It's an attack upon reality. Now, again, how did we get to an attack upon reality? Make sure we understand, because we threw off God. God is the ultimate source of truth and reality. God is real. He is the creator. We find purpose. We find truth. We find reality in God. God tells us how things really are. He tells us what is true about ourselves. Even though our idealistic view of mankind is that we're all basically good, God says, no, the reality is you are a sinner. You are depraved. That, see, that's, that's the thing. But we, we've entered in this bizarro world where reality now, we're, we're attacking reality. And reality now, it's like people, people, people have lost the concept of truth, which makes sense. Once you lose the concept of truth, which is that which corresponds to fact and reality, the very ne- obviously the very next stage is taking down reality. And that's where we are. And just as the church fell for the a fact, the, almost this relativistic view of truth, that your truth becomes true no matter what the facts are, we now have Christians who have fallen into the very world attacking reality. They've created a separate reality, and then that reality is supposedly binding on everyone else. Let me give you some examples of how this is playing out in real time in 2020. Again, the sirens cannot be loud enough. I'm not going to play them again. I'm not going to play them again because I know I'm probably annoying you, but I'm annoying you on purpose. I keep playing those sirens to annoy you because you need to realize, well, what should annoy you is not the sirens. What should annoy you right now is the situation that we're currently facing, all right? Let's look at some examples of this, all right? Let's go to South Dakota. Let's go to South Dakota. This was published November the 16th, 2020. So yesterday, I was sent, I was sent this article by a few people. And uh, when I read this, I just I was shaking my head. My daughter uh, ca- uh, came into my study last night. Was like, "Did you see this?" And I'm like, oh, "This is just this is how bad things have gotten." But let's let's l- listen to this. Here's the headline: South Dakota ER nurse recalls how dying coronavirus patients spend the last minutes of their life insisting the virus isn't real. So here's a nurse, works in the emergency room, and she is t- recalling, telling people how dying coronavirus pa- patients, this is someone in the hospital, they're dying of coronavirus, and they spend their last minutes insisting the virus isn't real. This isn't real. This, this, no, this is not real. It's, it's a hoax. I, I, I don't believe it. Now, you talk about an attack upon reality. You're literally suffering the consequences of a reality, and then you deny that reality. That's, that's, it's like this weird, bizarre world that we find ourselves in 2020. Let's, let's just listen to, or let me read the rest of this article. South Dakota ER nurse Jody Doring has seen some disturbing examples of COVID-19 denial as she works through the pandemic. After a Twitter thread of her, exper- of her experiences started circulating, Doring appeared on CNN's New Day on Monday to describe how South Dakota hospitals are overwhelmed with coronavirus patients. Now, I don't know how many people have emailed me who claim to be Christians who say, no, the hospitals are not overwhelmed. That's fake. It's not real. So they, they have their own reality. But please note, they have their reality and they're telling me that their reality is the reality and I must go along with it. And if I don't go along with it, then I'm the one who is deceived by the New World Order and the Illuminati and whatever other crazy conspiracy theory they have. And then you'll ask them, do you work in a hospital? Do you know anybody? And, and now they'll give you some. Well, I know someone who have a third cousin of a fourth person, and they told me. And he's like, do you have any firsthand information? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And now what they don't realize is the reason they are buying into a, 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 a alternative reality, almost a, a reality that they've created, is because what, whether they like it or not, they threw off God. Now, they claim to believe, believe in Jesus. They will claim that all day. But God is clearly not the thing that's influencing their worldview. They're letting, uh, they're letting uh, other alternative realities be, become the thing that influences the way they see the world. 
right? Let's let's continue here, all right? So I'm going to – just go back and I'm going to read this, in, uh, this entire section here again. After a Twitter thread of her experiences – remember the name of the nurse is Jody Doring. Uh, her experiences started circulating. Uh, she appeared on CNN's New Day on Monday to describe how South Dakota hospitals are overwhelmed with coronavirus patients. And yet some of them don't believe the virus they have is real. While many patients are grateful for their care they receive – from nurses, some COVID-19 patients spend their very last moments on earth. Refu- now, I add uh, on earth, I added that part. Um, so I want to make sure I, I don't misquote this. Uh, these COVID patients spend their last moments refusing to call family and friends because they're convinced they're going to be fine. Doring said their last dying words are, this can't be happening. It's not real. Doreen recalled, in some cases, patients even insist they have the flu or lung cancer to avoid acknowledging the coronavirus. So they're in the, now, now here's what's bizarre. They go to the hospital, but then they don't believe the people in the medical world. I get so tired of that. I worked in the medical world for 22 years and people like, I don't believe this and I don't believe this and I don't believe this. And then as soon as everything goes wrong, where do they show up? At the doctor's office to listen to doctors who they claim they don't believe or are a part of some grand conspiracy to put a microchip in you via flu vaccine or whatever the crazy idea is at the time. Well, if you don't trust them, then why do you go to them to save your life? Right. If you reject all medicine, well, then just stay home when you're dying and, you know, put some essential oils on your forehead and you'll be all better. Okay. well, no, when everything falls apart, you run to the very medical profession that you say is part of the grand conspiracy to kill you. It's bizarre, bizarre how it happens because you create your own reality. But just imagine there's a patient there. They're dying. They're reaching their last moments. And I'm not going to call my family. I'm going to be fine. This is not real. This can't be happening. This is not real. I know I've got, I've got the flu. No, I've got lung cancer. I, I don't have COVID. Well, well, then why are you there at the hospital? Right? Why, why are you there? Because you don't, you don't trust the medical professions. Um, uh, she says their last dying words are this can't be happening. It's not real. And when they should be, and when they should be FaceTiming their families, they're filled with anger and hatred. Anger and hatred at home. Who are they angry at? Doing went on to mention how more people have died of COVID-19 in South Dakota than live in the town where she's from. South Dakota has the highest COVID-19 mortality rate of almost anywhere in the world. Only North Dakota and the entire countries of Belgium and uh, uh, rank higher. There's some other countries here. Without a, mask ma- uh, without a mask mandate and with low rates of mask wearing, the Dakotas have seen coronavirus cases spike over the past few months. No, 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 don't. It doesn't. Don't, don't wear those masks. Those masks, they don't do any good. Just don't, don't, don't believe that. Don't believe that. Uh um, someone posted, uh, nor, uh, uh, they have another uh, statement here. North Dakota is way beyond just merely hit hard. It ranks as the number one hotspot for COVID-19 mortality rate in the entire world. So here in the United States of America, right, where you think we have education, we, we, we have, you know, we're a wealthy industrial nation. We have access to, to information. No, we, we one of, one of the hot, hot spots of, of COVID-19 mortality is in the United States of America. How does that happen? It happens because people have created a, a fake reality. All right. uh, North Dakota has the lowest mask wearing rate in the United States, according to survey data. States without mask mandates saw sharp spikes. Well, I'm, you know, I, whatever. OK, Um and she goes on, and, and you know, well, I could read the rest of the article, but you get the idea. Uh, she, she's like, you know, I, they, they, they're denying reality. Why? Well, of course they're denying reality. It's a war on real- reality. How did you get to a war on reality? You got to a war on truth. How did you get to a war on truth? It's you, we threw off the restraints of God. No God, no source for truth, no source for reality. Oh, wait, no, yes, there is a source for truth and reality. It becomes our own twisted, demented minds. And, and listen, here's the thing. If you throw off God, what are you left with? You're left with yourself. And what does the Bible say about us? That our heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all, A-L-L, all things. 
So if you throw off God and you're left with self, you end up into a world of deception. Let me say it again. When you throw off God, you are left with self and self brings about total deception, right? You throw off God, you're left with self and self will just deceive you. You can't trust yourself. I know the world says, listen to your heart. No, I know how many pop songs have been written to say, listen to your heart. Your heart is deceitful above all things. If you throw off God, you're left with the deceits of the human heart. You either trust God to determine truth and determine reality, or you listen to yourself, or you listen to other people. It's, it's, it, it, it cannot work that way. We have to realize there is an attack about reality. Now, let me give you an example. Let me, oh, I've already given you one. Let me give another right? Oh boy, this one, the, the sirens need to be, I need to hit the sirens one more time. I'll have to do it here in a minute, all right? Um, but uh, this was crazy. Yesterday, I don't even remember where I was going. I don't even remember where I was going, but I was in my car. And whenever I'm in my car, you know, oh no, I turn on the radio. And every time I do, I almost end up having a seizure. So yesterday, I, I think I first turned on talk radio, but Rush Limbaugh wasn't uh, wasn't in because of uh, his you know struggle with cancer currently, um, which is a tragic thing. Um, and, and not that I always agree with Rush Limbaugh. By no means do I always agree with Rush Limbaugh. But I, I always try to listen to things from a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different perspectives. Okay, just just hear me out. I'm not here to get into a discussion about what I'm listening to. I'm just telling you what was happening. So Rush wasn't on, so I decided to turn over to Christian radio. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, listen. So when you turn on secular talk radio and you're listening to the world, I don't expect them to understand truth. I don't even under, expect them to understand reality because they've re, they're, they're not utilizing God to be the dominant factor in their worldview and how they see things. They're not looking at things from a doctrinal theological perspective. That's the whole point of this podcast, Theology Central. We look at the world from a theological perspective. I'm trying to get Christians to do that. So I don't get near as upset when I hear crazy stuff on secular radio because I don't expect them to be trafficking in the world of truth. But when I turn on Christian radio, I expect them to have touch with reality. Why? Well, because they supposedly believe in God, right? And God should be the thing that ultimately influences the way they think. Not their politics, nothing else, but God should be the the dominant factor. But over and over and over again, Christian radio demonstrates something else. So I I don't want to get into a whole discussion about that, but clearly Christian radio demonstrates God is not the thing influencing the way they perceive the world over and over and over again. And I've given you all kinds of examples. Well, yesterday... They, uh, on Christian radio, was going all crazy again over the whole voter fraud claim. Now, I want you to listen to me carefully. If you're on Christian radio and you're going to talk about voter fraud and you're going to be allowing a Christian perspective, right? You're going to use truth and reality because that's what Christians we should focus on because we believe in the God of truth and the God who is real. He determines reality. Then guess what we would do? We would say, here are claims being made about voter fraud. Here's what we know. Here's what we don't know. Here's what the Trump administration has actually taken to court. Here's how many court uh, cases have already been rejected. How many, how uh, the Trump administration has even changed some of their claims, right? So, because there's a lot of people out there making all kinds of claims about voter fraud. That is widespread. It's absolutely proven. And then you're like, well, what is the Trump administration actually doing in court? And you're like, how come what they're doing in court doesn't reflect what everyone is saying is so absolutely widespread and proven because if it was so widespread and proven, they would be taking that evidence to court. But they're not. But it, there's a disconnect. Now, you know why there's a disconnect? Because clearly all of the so- so-called evidence that everyone said is so overwhelming is not overwhelming enough or factual enough or actual enough or real enough to be used in a court of law. And if judges are saying, get out of here, that's nonsense. What are you doing? And rejecting it, that should tell you something. See, because what should we worry about? Truth, truth, that which conforms to facts and reality. And what should we do? Be trafficking in the real world, the real world. But there's almost these alternative realities right now. You turn on one thing, voter fraud is widespread, It's absolutely proven. The whole election is going to be overturned. Donald Trump is our president. He will have a second term. There's no way you can stop this. The evidence is overwhelming. 
That's how, if you listen to some programs, that's how they, they will uh, describe the situation. If you turn on another program, they'll be like, no, there is absolute, there's no voter fraud at all. And you're like, okay, how can we have people with two such bizarre views of reality? Because there's a war on reality. Why? Because we threw off God. So we're going to listen to a little bit of the stuff that I heard yesterday on Christian radio. We're just going to listen to a little bit of it so that you can get an idea of what I'm talking about, right? Here we go. I got this. uh, This is like 17 minutes into the program. uh, The whole program is an hour long, so I didn't want to go through everything. And he talks about all kinds of other things and how he hates Fox News now and all the other stuff. But here we go. Let's listen. This is Focal Point with Brian Fisher on American Family Radio. Howdy and welcome back to Focal Point on American Family Radio, the home <laughs> of muscular Christianity on conservative good. talk radio. And I am your host, President-elect Brian Fisher. Happy to have you in the conversation today. Now, I've got a series here of five absolutely dynamite sound bites. Buckle up because this is going to rock your world. These are sound bites from Sidney Powell. She is one of the most powerful and effective lawyers in the country. She's the one that got the bogus charges against Lieutenant General Michael Flynn dropped like a hot rock. He had a legal team before that. They were monkeying around in the shallows, not doing diddly. She came in, and in a matter of weeks, she had charges against Michael Flynn dropped. So she's a she is an outstanding attorney. Attorney, she says in the soundbite, I didn't preserve it and include it in the list, but she said I never say anything unless I can prove that I'm right. And I believe her. She is a woman of integrity and character. Now, she's talking about these Dominion machines that were used to count votes. This is an electronic machine to count votes. And she's telling us what they discovered in their election lawsuits against the fraud that they believe has been perpetrated against the Donald Trump campaign. So let's just go through these in sequence. And I just want to say, I, I believe her. I, I Whatever I credibility I have to offer, I will vouch for what I know about this woman. Here's clip number one. I want to get your take on what you, report, what you and I spoke about just a few minutes ago, and that is a gentleman named Peter Neffinger. Tell me how he fits into all of this. Yes, well, he is listed as its former Admiral Peter Neffinger, or retired Admiral Peter Neffinger. He is president and on the board of directors of Smartmatic. And it just so happens he's on uh, Mr. Biden's presidential transition team that's going to be non-existent because we're fixing to overturn the results of the election in multiple states. And President Trump won by not just hundreds of thousands of votes, but by millions of votes that were shifted by this software that was designed expressly for that purpose. So the Smartmatic software in these Dominion machines was designed for the express purpose of cheating in the vote count in elections. It was first used to elect Hugo Chavez in Venezuela by overwhelming Majority. All right, let's go to clip number two. This is Sidney Powell. The evidence is coming in so fast, I can't even process it all. Millions of Americans have written, I would say by now, uh, definitely hundreds of thousands have stepped forward with their different experiences of voter fraud. But this is a massive election fraud, and I'm very concerned it involved not only uh, Dominion and its Smartmatic uh, software, but that the software essentially was used by other election machines also. It's the software that was the problem. Even their own manual explains how votes can be wiped away. Uh, they can put, it's like drag and drop Trump votes to a separate folder and then delete that folder. And delete that folder. So drag and drop votes you don't want to keep in the system, you don't want to count. Drop them into a folder, delete that folder, they're gone. Nobody knows they even existed. Let's go to clip number three. 
We are collecting evidence now from various whistleblowers that are aware of substantial sums of money being given to family members of state officials who bought the software. I mean, we're talking about hundred million dollar packages for new voting machines suddenly in, in multiple states and benefits ranging from financial benefits for family members to sort of what I would call election insurance uh, because they know that they can win the election if they are using that software. It's really an insidious, corrupt system, and I can't tell you how livid I am with our government for not paying attention to complaints even brought by Democrats, Carolyn Maloney, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, over the last several years in written letters with uh, expert reports and some documentation of how corrupt this software is, and nobody in our government has paid any attention to it. Nobody paid any attention to it. That's why Christopher Ray, head of the FBI, he's got to go. He's got to be out of there. This is completely irresponsible. All right, clip five. Sidney Powell, one more. He said that there was an unusual patch that was put into the software while it was live, and it's highly unusual to put a patch in there. Is that what you're referring to? Tell me how it's done and how these back doors work. Okay, that's part of it. They can stick a thumb drive in the machine or upload software to it, even from the Internet. They can do it from Germany or Venezuela, even. They can remote access anything. They can watch votes in real time. They can shift votes in real time. We've identified mathematically the exact algorithm they used and plan to use from the beginning to modify the votes in this case to make sure Biden won. That's why he said he, he didn't need your votes now. He would need you later. He was right. I mean, in his demented state, he had no filter and he was speaking the truth more than once, including when he said he had the largest voter organ voter fraud organization ever. Well, it's massive election fraud. It's going to undo the entire election. And they can do anything they want with the votes. They can have the machines not read the signature. They can have the machines not read the down ballot. They can make the machines mm. read and uh, catalog only the Biden votes. It's like drag and drop whatever you want, wherever you want, upload votes. Yeah. In fact, we've got math in Mi Michigan and Pennsylvania, I think it is, that all of a sudden hundreds of thousands of votes at a 67 percent ratio for Biden, 23 percent for Trump, yeah. were uploaded multiple times into the system. So they can change the vote count on the fly, which may explain some of the hinky stuff that we saw during the vote counting. Remember, in major states, swing states, and in major cities, the vote count mysteriously stopped. About 6, 8 p.m. in the evening, uh, it stopped after the polls closed, then the vote counting stopped. And they've got an algorithm, according to Sidney Powell, they've got an algorithm that they can activate, which will do kind of an analysis on the fly and let you know on a projected basis how many votes you need to manufacture using this Dominion software to make sure that your guy wins the election. So if they can prove this stuff in court, and she says, I never say anything that I can't prove, that I can't back up, this would be the bombshell, virtually one of the biggest bombshells in the history of, of our democracy. All right. Well, listen, I. Uh... All right. Now, let's let's just stop right here. There's so much to unpack there. And I didn't want to interrupt as it goes on because there's so many things I could have said. But I want you to hear this. This is Christian radio. Throwing all of this out there is just absolute fact. This is the way it is. Now, you could just raise one logical question. Well, if this software is so good to just change votes, then why didn't the Democrats win everything? All right. I mean, if you're going to go with this, supposedly this is absolutely big fraud. It's going to overturn the election. It's easily, easily proven. Now, I don't know why Trump administration is not already in court proving all of this. But OK. But the obvious question is, why didn't they use the software to win everything? Every Senate, House, Congress, judge, governor. Why didn't they use it to just win everything? And then the Democrats would have absolute and complete control.
and be able to once again, I mean, you know, according to the way the conspiracies work, destroy the world, destroy our churches, take away our Bibles, take away our guns, put us in concentration camps, start killing us, chipping us uh, uh, so that we all surrender to the mark, you know, to surrender to the Antichrist and all the other things that I have been told. I remember Christians sending me email after email after email uh, when uh, when Obama was, uh, you know, elected. And I was told that, you know, he he was a Muslim. He wasn't from America. He was going to bring in Sharia law. He was going to uh, outlaw outlaw churches. He was going to take away our Bibles. That churches were going to be shut down. Uh, that we were going to be, um, you know, uh, be, microchips were going to be put in our bodies through the flu vaccine. I mean, on and on and on and on and on and on and on. That Obamacare was really set up so that we would all be chipped and we would surrender to the Antichrist. He was going to bring in the Antichrist. I heard a million claims, and then the Obama administration came. The Obama administration went. Well, well. Did all those people who make all of those claims ever come back to me and apologize for fraudulent, fake information? No, because they live in an alternative reality. So see, if you listen to Christian radio right there, there, that's the reality. It's This voter fraud is widespread. It's proven. I remember she said, like in a number of cases, it's going to overturn the entire election. And supposedly, she doesn't say anything she can't prove in court. All right. Today is November... Today is November the 17th. Why hasn't it been proven in court yet? Now, maybe it will be. Maybe maybe she maybe that what they just stated is absolutely factual. But here's the thing. You have to hey, look, if you're going to have a reality, if you're going to have, you know, any touch with reality, you got to realize that the reality being put forth there is not the reality when you start doing a little bit of research because you're going to find counterclaims. Let me give you an example. This comes to us from the U.S. from USA Today, published November the 14th. Now, that's on Christian radio yesterday, November the 16th, but on November the 14th. So even before that aired, we, hear, we, we find this fact check. Dominion voting machines didn't delete votes from Trump and switch them to Biden. So in other words, there was already competing claims, already offering a different perspective out there before that person went live on Christian radio yesterday. So why didn't that individual yesterday acknowledge, hey, there are two different claims out there. And as Christians, we have to care about truth. We have to care about reality because God is the source of truth and reality. God, God should be the thing influencing his thinking. You know what's influencing his thinking? Not God. His desire for Trump to be reelected, his Republican right wing leaning thinking. Look, as Christians, we should not care about right wing, left wing, Republican, Democrat. We should care about truth. So why did he not articulate? Wait a minute. This woman's making a lot of claims. Please note that there are people out there claiming that this is not true, that this is a hoax. There's hundreds of articles out there calling this whole Dominion software thing into question. Now, maybe what both can't be right. Both cannot be reality. So one of them will, or maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle. I don't know. We have to wait. We have to see. I just know this. If the informa- if the evidence is so overwhelming as they claim, the Trump administration would already be in court having these things thrown out. It doesn't seem to be working. All right. Um, Here's the, here's the claim. Dominion voting systems deleted votes for Donald Trump switched votes to Joe Biden. Multiple conservative news sources have claimed this week that vote counting software from Dominion voting systems deleted votes for President Donald Trump and switched votes to President-elect Joe Biden. OAN's uh, uh, Lila uh, Fifield, I guess is how you say the name, made the claim on air earlier this week per a clip on uh, Mediate, right? So there's a website that has the clip, which appears to be the original source of this claim. Election systems, this is a quote, election systems across the country are found to have deleted millions of votes cast for President Trump, she said. According to the unaudited analysis of data obtained from Edison Research, a states using Dominion voting system may have switched as many as 435,000 votes from President Trump to Joe Biden. And the author also finds another 2.7 million Trump votes appear to have been deleted by Dominion, including almost 1 million truckloads in Pennsylvania alone. That seems to be the original claim. 
That seems to be the original claim, all right? Fact or fiction? We're fact checking, we're fact checking the news and sending it uh okay, so they've got a, a, a thing here that you can sign up to get some you know information sent to you. All right, here's the thing. Similar claims appeared on Gateway Pundit, though it credits the findings to the website the Donald.win. So, so a, a claim, so Gateway Pundit, supposedly like they made the same claim and they credit their findings to a website called the Donald.win. Okay, now wait a minute. So, so your, your source is the Donald.win, that's your source. And they all claim, supposedly, Edison Research. Trump himself then magnified the claim. Then Trump took all of this claim and he, he, he uh, I guess, uh, tweeted out, Report, Dominion deleted 2.7 million Trump votes nationwide. Data analysis finds 221,000 Pennsylvania votes switched from President Trump to Biden. 941,000 Trump votes deleted. State using Dominion voting system switched 435,000 votes from Trump to Biden, he wrote on Twitter. All right. His son, Donald Trump Jr., also implied that Dominion voting systems had improperly tallied votes for uh, Biden in a post on Instagram. What's uh, what's the difference between a Dominion voting machine and Hunter Biden? Nothing. They both give 10 percent to the big guy. The post read Um, uh, O.A.N.N., the Gateway Pundit, the White House and Trump Jr. have not responded to requests for comments from USA Today. So USA Today reach out to all of these people going, "Okay, give us talk to us. We need information. And then they, they, they don't respond. Well, why don't they respond? Respond and say, here's the evidence. Here's the facts. We have that. Why would you not want to respond to USA Today? If you've got overwhelming evidence, don't just tweet out a claim. Show the evidence. All right. Take it to the American people. A national coalition announced Thursday that there is no evidence that any voting software deleted or changed votes in last week's election per USA Today. So a national coalition just stated this. In fact, the security group, which includes the Department of Homeland Security, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, and the National Association of State Election Directors, described the election as the most secure in American history. Now, again, that's that's a completely separate reality than the reality we heard from the clip on Christian radio. That's the point I want you to get. Everyone just is creating their own reality. What is reality? What is truth? That, and and we're, we're going to live in a country where people are so divided. And the division is not even along political lines anymore. The division is among which form of reality are you living in? That is where Christians have to go. No, 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 no. We're not going to fall for this. We're not going to fall for this. You create reality. We're going to find out what reality is and stick with that. Uh, so they go on to say, there is no evidence that any voting system deleted lost votes or changed votes or was in any way compromised, the coalition concluded. Now, again, that conclu- uh, th- this included um, the Department of Homeland Security, Cybersecurity, Infrastructure Security Agency, and the National Association of State Election Directors. And they say that there's no evidence of any voting system deleting or, or, or lost votes, changed votes, or in any way compromised. That's the co- coalition. That's what they concluded. Now, good. If you don't believe them, fine. If you don't believe them, fine. Well, okay. You've got to first demonstrate then a that they're lying, and then b you've got to prove with actual evidence other than Twitter, other than some website that just claims it. You've these are people who are. Who are I mean, who are you going to believe? All right. If you're going to reject it, you've got to you've got to have something better, right? They continue. And um, it added that all states where close results have paper records of each vote that allow for a recount if necessary. Uh, So please note, they say that all states with close results have paper records of each vote. So supposedly, I guess there's a paper record of each vote as well, not just in the computer, right? Again, that's what that's stating. I don't know if that's accurate. I'm just reporting what uh, is here. This is an added benefit for security and resilience, the coalition wrote. This process allows for the identification and correction of any mistake or errors. So in other words, if the computer just magically got rid of votes, well, those votes would have a paper record, unless you're going to say they they destroyed the paper record as well, which again, then you just believe that the conspiracy is greater and greater and greater, more people are involved in the conspiracy, and 
you supposedly have the evidence to prove it, but then for some reason you don't ever end up in court proving it. The CISA director uh, retweeted a message from the election law expert, David Becker, that condemned wild and baseless claims about voting machines, according to CBS News. And this is what he wrote. Please don't retweet wild and baseless claims about voting machines, even if they're made by the president. These fantasies have been debunked many times, including by, and they give all the government agencies, the government agencies that are debunking these myths. No, but I can't trust the government. Well, wait, pre- isn't it President Trump a part of the government? Like, like, wh- but, but it's the deep state that's work, you know, working. It's a, it's a coup. And they're, they're, they're trying, you, you, like, no matter what evidence you present, it doesn't matter. Why? Because we threw out God. We fought truth. And now we are denying reality. And guess what reality is? Whatever you want it to be. And if you want to live in a reality that, well, if the whole vote was, the whole election was stolen, then that becomes your reality, and you don't care about hearing the counter uh, perspective. Did Christian radio offer the counter perspective? Obviously not. Why? Goes against their reality. Goes against their narrative. Uh, they continue. Uh, Edward uh, Perez, an election technology expert at the OSET Institute, a nonprofit that studies voting infrastructure, told the New York Times that claims about Dominion voting machines are misinformation at best. In many cases, they're outright disinformation. I'm not aware of any evidence of specific things or defects in Dominion software that would lead one to believe that votes had been recorded or counted incorrectly, Perez said. Now, again, there's someone else. This is part of their, their, their life looking into these kinds of things. Again, maybe not. A Dominion itself. Now, they didn't even, on Christian radio, they didn't even allow, they didn't even speak this. And see, this is just so, it's so irresponsible. It tells me that you're more involved in creating a narrative than you are in finding truth. You should be worried about finding truth. Let me state it again. Christians should be the one pursuing truth. Christians should be the one that demands truth. Christians should be the one putting away lying. Christians should be the one going, we've got to get to the bottom of this. Now, I've got no problem. Listen, I'll make it very clear. I've stated it so many times. Uh, Al Gore had 32, 34 days to fight the election results in Florida. All right. Donald Trump should have 32, 34 days to fight. I got no problem with that. Fight. Go through every, every available legal avenue that you have. But you cannot do that based off lies, fraud, and misinformation. Right? And, and for the rest of us, we don't want to be out there sharing fraudulent information. If you're going to turn on a microphone and share one view of reality, you got to share the other view of reality. And then we got to say, as Christians, we need to be careful until all the truth comes out because we want truth and we want to find out what the reality actually is, not what our ideological view of reality is, not what our notion of reality is, but what it is. So if you're on Christian radio and you're going to talk about the Dominion software doing all of this, maybe... You should actually talk to the people, I don't know, at the Dominion voting systems itself. Here we have it. The Dominion voting systems released a statement this week to deny the claims that its machines had deleted or changed votes. Dominion voting systems categorically denies false uh, assertions, assertions, assertions. Okay. (laughs) Dominion voting systems categorically denies false assertions about vote switching issues with our voting systems. It's, it's really bad when you're live on the air and you say a word and immediately your brain is like, are you an idiot? What did you just say? Okay. Uh, assertions about vote switching issues with our voting systems, the statement reads. Vote uh, deletion switching assertions are completely false. Uh, one, of the re- one of the problems sometimes about reading something um, is when you're reading the word, your mind, especially when you're live on the air, my mind is already like eight steps ahead of where I'm going to be. Like, okay, where am I going to go next? And sometimes you read a word and you don't even, well, I'll go back and listen. I'm like, what, what word did I, what word was that? And I'll go look at the article that I was reading from. I'm like, what was I thinking? So let me read that again. Dominion voting systems categorically denies false assertions about vote switch, about vote switching issues with our voting systems. The statement reads, vote deletion, switching assertions are completely False. The statement also addresses specific details of allegations from Trump and Gateway Pundit. Dominion calls the claim from Trump that its machines deleted 941,000 votes for him in Pennsylvania alone impossible. 
That's because Dominion only serves 14 counties in the state, which produced a total of 1.3 million votes, 52 percent or 676,000 of which went to Trump. That only leaves 624,000 other votes, fewer than what Trump claims were switched. Uh Uh-oh, facts get in the way of your baseless, absolutely baseless, insane claims. Let me read that again. So he, Trump claimed that 941,000 votes were deleted for him. They claim that's impossible, and here's their, their statistics. That's because Dominion only serves 14 counties in the state, which produce a total of only 1.3 million votes. 52%, 676,000 went to Trump. That only leaves 624,000 other votes, uh, fewer than what Trump claims were switched. Well, they, they can't switch more votes than were actually there, unless now you're saying that they actually just made up votes. And, and again, why even, why even make it that close? If, if, the, if this, I don't even understand. If the software was in place to pull all of this off, then why did they just switch, you know, turn, you know, flip the switch early in the evening and it's like, boom, the results are coming in and it's staggering. Biden is winning by a landslide. This is the, the biggest upset in the history of American politics. Why didn't they just flip, why, why make it close? Why, why if, when we just play the conspiracy out. Why put yourself in a situation where it's going to be fighting and legal? Why did just destroy them immediately and every and every basically in almost every state? Boom, 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 boom. Pick. I mean, the conspiracy, the conspirators, the people involved in the conspiracy should have got together and go, which states do we need? OK, here, what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to uh, switch. You know, uh, uh, five million votes came in. We're going to make sure three million of those are for Biden. All right. Everybody good. All right. Thumbs up. Good. We're going to have this. We're going to make sure by 10 o'clock tonight that it's over. Well, guess what? They didn't do that. So so are they just it's part of the conspiracy, but they didn't work it right. And they used the machine to cheat Trump, but they didn't figure out how to use the machine to work a Senate and other offices like for Democrats. Like, I don't I don't get it. But that's okay. You can't ask any of those questions because you ask those questions. You're a commie and you're trying to destroy America. Uh, The statement from Dominion Voting System also noted that Edison Research, a firm that OANN and Gateway Pundit cited in their stories, has refuted claims that it produced any data to support allegations of vote switching. So remember, all of these people who are quoting Edison Research, Edison Research came out and refuted claims that it produced any data to support such allegations. So now Edison Research, which is cited by so many people as the source, the source is like, we didn't say that. Okay, well, then what are you left with? What are you left with? Christian radio making baseless assertions of voter fraud that we yet have been proven in a court of law? All right. Um, A few, though not all, of the counties in Michigan and Georgia that experienced minor issues on election day used voting systems made by Dominion. But the errors were not glitches with the machines, and there's no indication that the software affected the vote counts. In Michigan, inaccuracies in two counties were due to human error, not software issues, per a statement from the Michigan Department of State. Just one county used software from Dominion. As with other isolated user errors that have occurred in the reporting of unofficial results, both in this and previous elections, this is not the result of any intentional misconduct by an election official or because of software or equipment malfunctioning or failing to work properly, the statement read. And in one Georgia county, an apparent problem with Dominion software delayed officials reporting of the vote tallies but did not affect the actual vote count per the New York Times. All right. And so their rating for this story is that it is false. Based on our research, the claim that Dominion Voting System deleted votes for Donald Trump or switched voter votes to Joe Biden is false. A National Election Security Coalition announced on Thursday that there is no evidence that any voting system deleted or lost votes, changed votes, or was in any way compromised. Other experts and Dominion itself also condemned the claims. All right, And then they give you the sources where they get all of their information and they have it all right there. Now, Guess what? If I'm able and I don't have a producer, I don't have a research staff like on Christian radio, he ha- that, that person talking, there's multiple people in the studio with him. I think there's three other people in the studio with him. He has a producer. He, he like none of them could say, hey, 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 dude, hey, hey, 
let, let, let's let's go let's go to a commercial. Let's let's do something. Hey, you know, they're giving him a signal through the window. Hey, stop, stop, stop. And then he goes to a break, and then they come back and, and, and they say, hey, 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 okay, we're on a break. Listen, there's all kinds of articles out there calling this whole claim into question. So there, there's a good chance that this is not true. So maybe you should give the uh, the the counter side so that we show that we're pursuing truth and that we care about reality. But no, 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 no. Even Christians now have have sacrificed truth and reality to create their own reality while we condemn others of doing the same thing. How can we not see the inconsistency in that? All right. And then I've got other articles here about this whole story. I've got, uh, let me see here. Uh, I've got, um, how many articles here? Uh, here's, um, this is from the BBC. Uh, U.S. election 2020, is Trump right about Dominion machines? And they go in there, again, giving the same information that, wait a minute, this is being called into question. Wait, this is being disputed. Wait, we, uh, we, we're, we're, we've got information here that this is not true. We got, you know, and again, uh, they, they have right here at the bottom, there is no evidence that any voting system deleted or lost votes, changed votes, or was in any way compromised. That, that's from the BBC. Now, of course, the BBC, they're, they're, they're definitely, you know, they've got a stake in the election being located not in the United States of America, but that's okay. The media is, now you can argue the whole media is a part of the conspiracy. So everyone's a part of the conspiracy. Every, everyone. And so the only people who know the truth are people who supposedly have enough evidence to, to to put it in, in a court of law, but for some reason, nothing has happened yet. Now, maybe it will. Listen to me. It Maybe it will. Maybe at some point, they will be able to go to court and overturn the election, and it will be proven to be the greatest you know, fraud in the history of American politics and the American electoral system. Okay, if you can prove it, great. But in the meantime, until it's proven, then the way you handle reality is, There are people making these claims. There are people calling into question these claims, countering these claims, and stating that those claims are fraudulent. As Christians, we want truth. So the truth is right now, there are competing narratives, both with a completely different view of reality, and we have to wait and try to find truth and figure out what the reality is, because as Christians, we believe in truth and we believe in reality, and that's what we're going to try to find. That seems pretty reasonable. I don't even think that that's that radical, but I guess it is. While I was talking, I was getting more things sent to me while I was talking. Um, And you see here what I have here. Um, What article is this? Okay, here we go. Here's an article they just sent, someone just sent to me. President Trump's lawyers. Now here's the lawyers. They withdraw key Pennsylvania voter fraud claim. So now the Trump lawyers are withdrawing some of their claims. Why are they withdrawing some of their claims? I thought they had overwhelming evidence. Why would they? Re- re- what's, what's going on? Here's the story. Um, President Donald Trump's campaign is withdrawing a central part of its lawsuit seeking to stop the certification of the election results in Pennsylvania, where Democrat Joe Biden beat Trump to capture the state and help win the White House. Uh, now, again, they're stating as if the election is over. I don't think that's necessarily fair. I think what you should do is like right now, the, the, the election is still being contested until the all illegal avenues are exhausted. We're going to wait before we declare someone a winner until all legal avenues are, are, are pursued and, and completed. Once that's done, then we can determine who wins. But ahead of a Tuesday hearing in the case, Trump's campaign dropped the allegation that hundreds of thousands of mail-in and absentee ballots, 682,479 to be precise, were illegally processed without its representatives watching. Now, remember, they've been claiming forever, we weren't allowed to watch. We weren't allowed to watch. Now they're, t- they're dropping that claim. Why? I thought it was absolutely proven. The campaign slimmed down lawsuit suit filed in federal court on Sunday, maintains the aim of blocking Pennsylvania from certifying a victory for Biden in the state. And it maintains its claims that Democratic voters were treated more favorably than Republican voters. All right, so now they're like, the voters were treated more fairly. That, that's the claim. Now, now, I thought they had all this other, why even get into who was treated more fairly? Supposedly you have evidence that some software completely changed, you know, 900 and something thousand votes. Just prove that. 
Um, the Associated Press on November, November the 7th called the presidential contest for the former Vice President Joe Biden after determining that the remaining ballots left to be counted in Pennsylvania would not allow Trump to catch up. Trump has refused to concede. The remaining claim in the lawsuit center on disqualifying ballots cast by voters who were given an opportunity to fix mail-in ballots that were going to be disqualified for a technicality. The lawsuit charges that Democratic heavy counties violated the law by identifying mail-in ballots before Election Day that had defects, such as lacking an inner uh, secrecy envelope or lacking a voter signature on the outside envelope, so that the voter could fix it and ensure that their vote would count, called curing. Republican heavy counties followed the law and did not provide a notice and cure process disenfranchising many, the lawsuit said. Now, okay, again, if you can prove this, it should be proven. And if you can throw out, if, if, the, if the curing of those ballots were not legal and they should be thrown out, I'm, I'm all for that. I, I want facts and I want truth and I want reality. A lawyer representing the Democratic National Committee, which is seeking to intervene, said it isn't clear how many votes voters were given the chance to fix their ballot. But he said it is minimal and certainly fewer than the margin, almost 70,000 to separate Biden and Trump. So in other words, they're claiming even if you say that there were a thousand that were cured, that would still not fix the situation. Uh, they go, hang on, I got an ad popping up here. Um, they said the numbers aren't even close to the margin between the two candidates, not even close. In any case, there is no provision in state law preventing counties from helping voters to fix a ballot that contains a technicality. Uh, he said the lawsuit does not contain any allegation that someone voted illegally. They, they really should be suing the counties that didn't allow voters to make corrections. The goal should be making sure every vote counts. So if there's no law against it, and they're not, they're not making an allegation that something illegally was done, then what are they trying to do? Just holding up the process to prove a point? All right, so there's that story someone had just uh, sent to me, and I've got uh, plenty of others. Now, we've been on the air for an hour and 12 minutes, so I'm going to have to wrap this up. All right, there's a lot more I could, I could demonstrate here. So let me try to state this again. All right, I'm just getting, making sure I don't get any more emails here. Um, all right, someone sent me an email. Make sure. All right, okay. Uh, someone sent me an article, but it, it has nothing to do with what we're currently uh, talking about. So we'll stop right there. Okay, here we go. Let's wrap this up. All right, here, here we go. We're in the middle of a dangerous situation right now. And the danger has nothing to do with COVID. The danger has nothing to do with the election. The danger is people around the world and even many Christians have, in a sense, thrown off God, right? They did not, they're not submitting to God. Submitting to God is where we arrange everything under God's ultimate authority and control. We arrange our ideas and our thoughts under God's control. We're thrown off that restraint, Psalm chapter two. We've thrown off that restraint. We've broken the chains. We've thrown off the cords. We're gonna do things our way. We're going to do this. And by doing that, we entered into a post-Christian era, which Again, I'm perfectly, I, and because we have people listening sometimes who don't understand my perspective, no one should be forced to be a Christian. Christianity should not be forced on anyone. I want everyone to have the freedom not to be a Christian, just like I want people to have the freedom to practice Christianity. By no means do I want a theocracy or any government-forced religion on anyone. Don't, I don't want that. But we, we threw off God, and we entered into a post-Christian era. Fine, that's what the world wants. Many within the church entered into the post-Christian era. They have a Christian church, but it's really a post-Christian church because God is not the thing that's dominating the way people are thinking. Politics are, all kinds of uh, ideologies, and it's not really a God-focused mentality. It's something else, still claiming to be Christian, though, Christian nationalism and a lot of the other issues. Progressive Christianity, we've talked about all of these things, all right? So then, once that happens, the next two things to fall is truth and reality, because God is the ultimate source of truth and the ultimate source of reality. Once you throw off God, then who becomes God? You become God, and then you declare what truth is, and you declare what reality is. So we heard a clip on Christian radio yesterday where they were putting forth a reality that doesn't correspond to actual reality. It's a fraudulent reality. It's a made-up reality. Now, maybe it turns out to be real, but it can't be real now when there's clearly other uh, another narrative calling it into question and challenging it. So the reality is right now, 
We've got claims being made that the vote was rigged and, and changed and deleted and, 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 you know, it's all fraud. And we got other claims saying there was no fraud. So where do we stand as Christians? We want the truth. So I want the Trump administration to take all legal avenues, take their claims to court, stop getting, get off television, get off Twitter, get into a courthouse, present your supposed overwhelming evidence, and then see what happens. And if you don't have the evidence, then the Trump administration should be condemned strongly by Christians for them putting forth a narrative that's only going to divide the country more. No, you should be saying, here's the evidence we thought we had. We haven't been able to prove that evidence. Therefore, we're not going to win the legal case. Therefore, we are going to acknowledge that Joe Biden is the next president. We're going to start the transition process to get a smooth transition so that we can do what's best for the country. Because supposedly the Trump administration was all about making America great again and putting America first. Or if you're going to put America first, then set aside your ego, set aside your view of reality, find what the reality actually is, and then work with the other side for a smooth transition. But I, I, again, I'm more worried about what ha- is happening to Christians who buy into these pseudo realities, these fake narratives. And, they, and when you question them on it, they look at you like, no, I, I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to believe what I want to believe. No, as a Christian, you don't say that. Your Christian is, I want truth and I want reality, not my notion of reality, not my ide- ide- idealistic view of reality. I want actual reality. We're in a dangerous situation, post-Christian world, where truth and reality are being attacked and being destroyed, and everyone's going to live in a world where they not only do what is right in their own eyes, they only believe what they believe is to be true, they're going to be living in an absolute fake reality. What does that mean for Christianity moving forward? So I'm going to end the program with this. Because everyone needs to realize we are in danger. And and you can email me your thoughts at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. I do have to say this as I end. Those on Tumblr who are attacking me right now, you are attacking me and you didn't even listen to what I had to say. I don't know what you're talking about, but you're you're speaking about things I'm saying. I think they saw that they, the title for this podcast episode. They immediately started commenting. I don't know how they could be commenting when I'm still on the air. They didn't even listen to me. Um, and they just made they made assumptions. What, what, they were well, oh, yeah, they were creating their own reality. They actually were proving my point while I was live on the air. You should have seen it. It was pretty hilarious. All right. Here we go. Let's end with this warning. Again, you can email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. Please wake up.